Now I'm going to come to the clinical features, which some of which have already been covered in the uh, classification criteria. The main features are dry eyes, dry mouth and dry nose. Xerophthalmia, xerostomia and xeromyceteria. There can be vaginal dryness as well. Fatigue is an important feature uh, which is uh, quite a difficult thing to treat because it's quite disabling. Uh, this was one of the features that Venus Williams mentions in her uh, interview. Joint involvement is an important feature. That's how usually many patients get diagnosed. It can be arthralgia or arthritis with or without synovitis. Dryness of eyes, not just the aqueous layer, there can be associated meibomian gland dysfunction as well. And the dry mouth leads to severe dental problems. They can have constitutional symptoms like fever in addition to fatigue. There may be a palpable parotid gland, submandibular gland or lacrimal gland. The skin can show vasculitis, purpura or annular erythema. If there is vasculitis and purpura, it indicates a worse prognosis. The kidney involvement is a distinct one. They get distal renal tubular acidosis and you can look for citrate in the urine to help you diagnose that and there may be stones because of this the patient can get renal stones they may also have tubular interstitial nephritis the distal rta can sometimes be the presenting feature with which a patient comes and then they get tested for Sjogren's and get diagnosed the lung involvement can be non-specific interstitial pneumonia usual interstitial pneumonia but the lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia is the one that is characteristic of Sjogren's the liver involvement can be there and uh, if if you suspect liver involvement and you think it may be primary biliary cirrhosis, you have to look for the appropriate antibody which is the anti-mitochondrial antibody. Gut may be involved. The CNS involvement can be vasculitis or demyelinating lesions. Um, peripheral neuropathy can also be a presenting feature in these patients. Uh, one important thing to look out for in Jogren syndrome is the risk of lymphoma. This is quite high, 15 to 20 times higher than healthy people. And uh, the usual type of lymphoma that happens is B cell, non-Hodgkin's type lymphoma. And it's the marginal uh, zone type, which usually has a good prognosis. Uh, so the patient can do quite well, even if they get this lymphoma. But the diffuse one that may happen uh, has a worse prognosis, but it's usually the marginal zone type. These are the risk factors for lymphoma. Recurrent swelling of parotid glands, if they have splenomegaly, lymphadenopathy or both, purpurea on the skin, score of greater than 5 on the eular Sjogren syndrome disease activity index, rheumatoid factor, cryoglobulinemia, a low C4 level, a CD4 T cell count lymphocytopenia, presence of ectopic germinal centers, a focus score more than 3 and germinal mutations in TNF-AIP3. If these are present, then they are at higher risk for lymphoma. So this is the parotid end gland enlargement that can happen. This is the uh, LIP that I talked to you about, lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia with characteristic cystic lesions on the CT in the lung. 